World famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jessa Big Dog Country Radio. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. How's it going? Good. Ready for daylight savings time. Kicks in this weekend. That's right. 2 a.m. on Sunday yeah. morning. Go to bed Saturday night. Spring yeah. forward one hour. Get that extra hour daylight savings time. I like it. You like that extra hour of sunshine in the afternoon? Yeah. No doubt. All right. Well, you're going to get your wish come Sunday. They need to keep it that time forever. They're trying to. No, it no. just ain't happen. Yeah. It needs to happen. Okay. Well, we've got a special guest in this morning. Bobby, do we have? Yeah, like I said, qualifying is taking place. Today's the last day to qualify. 12 noon is the deadline at the probate office. But we got Donnie Ray, one of the candidates running for sheriff. Donnie, appreciate you coming in. Again, you qualified yesterday officially. Yes, you gave us a, a statement last week about your announcement. So uh, we appreciate that. But tell us why you decided to enter this race for sheriff. Um, if you know me, I've been involved in this community for a long time. I started public safety back in um, 89 when I first got out of high school with um, the fire department, volunteer fire department. And then I got in law enforcement in 2001. And I've always been involved in the community. And um, there's something I've always wanted to do is run sheriff from day one. So I felt like it was my time. And the reason I waited a little while, everybody asked me why I waited this long. I did tell um, the former sheriff Carter that I would not run against him, and I didn't. Um, to me, I've been ready for a couple of years now, so that's why I'm running this time. What's well, a big county? So do you got a network of people to help you in all these places like Odom and Scriven and Garda and you know? I do, and um, I'm gonna be reaching out to more. Like I said, I just qualified yesterday, and um, with my job, I can't campaign during the day, so I'm having to do it all at night time, and then on the weekends. You mentioned your job. You got a pretty good job, don't you know? So you ready to give that up? I do. Um, but I've always wanted to be the um, sheriff and lead Wayne County. I actually, when I first started, I wanted to be chief of police because that's where I started at. But then I, when I switched over to county, I wanted to be a sheriff. And that's what my goal's always been. Now, how long have you been in law enforcement? Like I said, you got, I, you know, like I said, you sent us this press release, and mm-hmm. it says you've been in law enforcement for, for quite some time. Uh, you said it began back in 1989. So yeah, the 89 was with the fire department, volunteer fire department. I actually went in law enforcement um, in the academy in 2001. 2001. And I worked for the city for nine years. I also work for the sheriff's department, right? Yes, sir. So what, all, what all positions in law enforcement have you heard? Have you held? I'm sorry. Okay, I've held um, corporal, sergeant, uh, detective, chief deputy, and a director of security. And just joining us in the studio with us is Donnie Ray again. He's one of the candidates running for sheriff. Uh, unless somebody qualifies today, it looks like it's going to be a three-person race. Uh, the incumbent sheriff Chuck Mosley is going to join us on Monday. Toby Cameron is qualified as well. Again, got to ask you this question. Again, it's always difficult to defeat an incumbent sheriff. Usually the sheriff had to do something to upset the community. So what makes you think you can win this race and defeat the incumbent Chuck Mosley? Um, like I said, um, I've been in this community and involved in the community since 2012. Um, I volunteer for a bunch of uh, volunteer. I meant for uh, my security at different events and all. I'm very involved with the baseball program. As you know, I'm up there all the time. I do the uh, PBA for the state. I'm real involved with the chamber. So I'm out in the community. Um, and you're right, it is hard to beat the incumbent, but I believe with me being in Wayne County my entire life, my family being in Wayne County my entire life, my kids going through Wayne County High School, I think um, I know a lot of people by the activities I've been doing. Yeah, I guess I guess I'll, you know, we assume everybody knows who Donnie Ray is, but there's okay. people out in Wayne County that moved <laughs> in, don't know who Donnie Ray is. So tell us a little bit about Donnie Ray, your family, like I said, growed up here, yeah. you know, just to, so tell people that may not know who Donnie Ray is a little bit about yourself. Yeah. I'm from Garda. One of the unique things about me, if I moved three times and hadn't left the Garda city limits my entire life, I lived there. Um, my mom and daddy is of uh, Larry and Vonda Fay Ray. He um, worked at a Rainier for 40 plus years. My mama um, owned Classy Rags. I got one brother, Gary. He's um, two years older than me, and he works at uh, Medaniel Vending or Medaniel Supply now. But my family, um, what is it, 11 days from now, I'll be married to Ann for 30 years. Um, I've got four kids. The oldest one's Baxter Ray. He's 25. He lives in Atlanta. He's attorney downtown. He is attorney at law, corporate, and insurance litigator. He um, he worked for Moore Ingram and um, Johnson and Steel in downtown Atlanta. So he's right at Atlanta Braves Stadium. He's there. Been past the bar about six months ago. I'm very proud of him. I'm proud of, proud of all my kids. I got Blakely. She's 22. She um, goes to a coastal college. Works on Sea Island. And um, she's going to intern for Buddy Carter this summer. So she, um, she'll be with him this summer. 
And then I got Baylor. He's um, 18. He's a senior at high school. He plays tennis and does some FFA competition. And he is um, going to attend um, North Georgia, University of North Georgia next year in um, Gainesville for film. And then I got Branton, which is a freshman that uh, plays baseball and does show pigs and then the agriculture and all. So, again, if you get elected, is there anything you would do differently that's not being done now or any changes you'd like to make? Yeah, there's um, there's a lot. And I forgot to tell you, Ann, she's worked for the school system for 30 years. So she's uh, been a teacher for 30 years. She does um, ESLO. But, yeah, um, there's a lot of simple things we can do to help Wayne County. One of them for you, um, One of the, if I do get elected, one of the first things I like to do is put a PIO out there. The way that is, that's a public information offer. That's to get all this information out there as quick as we can, efficiently as we can, and also get the truth out there in a hurry. So, you know, if you don't catch up social media, they'll they'll take off with it. And, and um, this is a PIO can take care of that. So that's one of the big things I want to do. Um, and um, I know everybody, you know, of course, anybody's, everybody's going to tell you drugs is our main issue because we have a bunch of overdoses in Wayne County, a lot of drug issues. But um, the main thing with me about drugs is – is we got to have quality cases. Um, we got to make sure that, that our guys can go from start to finish with these all the way through with the paperwork, all the way up to the court. And it's a lot of time consuming. Um, there's some resources that could help us <clears throat> with that. And I'll be reaching out to some of them if I get elected to see if they could help us. But we got a lot of resources around town that can help us too. Um, I know everybody, you know, we, the sheriff's office and the police department's teamed up with the drug task force. But we also got three other departments we need to include, and that's the Odom Police Department, the Scriven Police Department, and also Coastal Pines Police Department. We could all team up and, and make a big difference in this community. Yeah, and qualifying ends today at 12 noon. It's a three-person race at the moment. You don't anticipate anybody else getting in the race at this point, do you? You haven't I've, heard anybody else? I have not heard anybody else's name, no, sir. So basically it's going to be a three-person race between the incumbent sheriff, yes. Chuck Mosley, you, and Toby Cameron. So like I said, it's a big county, so you get out there. Uh, it's a nonpartisan race, though, right? You're not running. No, 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 it's partisan. It is partisan. So, yes, sir. so everybody qualified on the Republican ticket, I assume. I, I have to I'm, check with Tim. I haven't even checked on that. So. I think we. I think all three are Republicans. I'm so it'll be sure. over with. Uh, in, so when's the first election? May the 21st. In May. So the, the hope is possibly get in a runoff or, you know. It, yes, sir. So. Runoff be, I think, 1st of June will be a runoff if there is one. Right. So this race could be decided before the Before November. November. I yes, got gotcha. you. Well, like I said this is Butch and Bob's show, so we keep. Like I said, uh, I got to ask the tough questions. And going back, you know, like I said, you were in law enforcement, yes. you know, and you remember the Earl Watson murder trial. Yeah, you know, the shooting took place over at uh, Little Creek. Uh, Gary Floyd was shot and killed. They had a big trial. Uh, uh, Tracy Brown defended uh, Earl Watson, and the case ended in a not guilty verdict. Yes. But at the time, there's just a lot of anger in that community towards law enforcement, towards yes. you. Uh, saying that you know the neighborhood felt that this guy terrorized that neighborhood for years and nothing was done about it. They felt yeah. that if he was arrested, nothing would happen. But you know, so take us through that time and well, you know all the like I said because I remember it well. There was just a lot of anger towards law enforcement, a lot of anger towards you as a deputy. There was, and um, you know that's um, it was a tough situation. But that was actually my first week as chief deputy. I had come over part time helping a little bit, but that was actually my first week of full. When the murder took place, yes, sir. I got you. So um, I had actually personally rode down there myself some and checked on the situation because I'd got wind of it. So yeah, I knew there was a lot of people upset about it. But um, so do you think you think they're still upset about it? You think you're over? You know, Um, is that died down? They've they've a few of them has reached out to me and talked to me about it, and um, we opened up and talked. You know, personally about it. So it's not as bad as it was then, no, sir. Okay, look, again, you're running. Again, it's a countywide race. So they yes. said a lot of knocking on doors, a lot of. So, you know, yes. how do you how do you think you'll reach the people? You know, going to advertising? I'm going to advertise. I'm going to have some meetings in each one of the communities. Um, I know we reached out to a couple people that's going to help me. We're going to probably boil some peanuts and hang out in one afternoons and everybody come meet me and talk to me. Like I said, you think you know everybody, but then. You go to Walmart somewhere, you'll meet people come out and ask you questions that you're not sure who they are. So, yes, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of going out, meeting, and greeting people. And like I said, I'm already involved in the community. I go to a bunch of all the – I was at the uh, grand opening yesterday. I got all the grand opening, try to, and all the ribbon cuttings and all that. So I'm going to use all that time too. Got any idea if you get elected here, you know, some people come on here and announce who their chief deputy is going to be. I remember that. <laughs> yes, sir. So. No, sir, I'm not going to do that. To me, you know, this is my personal opinion. It's a sheriff's race. 
So, and um, if I was sheriff, I wouldn't want anybody coming or talking to my deputies, trying to decide who the chief deputy is and all. So we'll have plenty of time to do that afterwards. So I didn't, I don't, I'm not, I, I talked to the sheriff face to face and I told him I would not do that. Right. also told him I wasn't going to much lane that we was going to run a good race. I'm going to run on what I believe and he can run on what he Right. You also and, went to him and told him you are going to run, right? Yes, sir, yeah, I did. Right, yes, sir, so. I did. Okay, do Well, again, uh, anything else you want to tell people? Uh, like I said, when people go in that ballot box and they see those three names, uh, at the moment, uh, why should they vote for Donnie Ray? Um, first of all, my uh, you know, um, I'm committed to this community, and I'm committed to the sheriff's office. I'm committed to the deputies up there. Um, I want everyone to go home safe. I want them all have all the safety stuff they need. Um, they've helped some with the pay, but we need to get it up a little bit more to be a little bit more competitive with people around here. So we're going to be accountable for what we do. If I run sheriff, I mean, make sheriff, we're going we're gonna to be very accountable. And when I say that, that's all the way down, from the patrolman all the way up to the command staff. Um, you're going to see them in the public. you want to do this. Uh, one of the things I want to do is um, adopt a school. We started that back years ago. We, we're going to have an SRO in every school, and that is great. I'm the first one to tell you. I've been going to school safety conferences four or five years now. I probably have more, so much training on school safety. It's unreal. But we also have the issues, in, you know, right now it's not all just schools. It's workplaces, churches, and everything else. So you're going to see our people out. You're going to see us around the community. If I get elected, you're going to see them out. But one of the things, like I say, is adopt a school. And what that is, if, if your school, your kid goes to that school or somebody knows that school, I'll ask you to adopt it, and you make 15 minutes out of your day to ride through that school and walk through and talk to these kids and get to know them. Um, another thing is if you go to that church, if you're going to and from church, I don't have any problem with you driving your truck, parking up front as a deterrence. Um, so we're going to be out in the community. You're going to see us at events, you know, like football games. We're going to have, you know, you got paid security there, but we're going to make sure our command staff and everybody else walks through to and be seen. So if I do get elected, I promise you we're going to be seen in the community. Okay. Well, again, well, I'm sure we'll get you in between now and the election time. We appreciate yes, you again sending us the press release, letting us know you're a uh, candidate for sheriff. Uh, we wish you but the best of luck. And, uh, Look forward to getting with you about some advertising here on the radio. Yes, and uh, like I said, I've known you a long time, and we wish the best. Well, I appreciate it, Bob. Anything, Anything else, Ron? I think we're good. All right. Take care. Thank you, sir. Glad you came on the show this morning. World famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. We'll be back more of the show in a moment. South Georgia weather. Here's your WIFO forecast. Good morning, everyone. Mostly cloudy skies will bring in a slight chance of a shower this afternoon with highs in the mid-70s and another slight chance of showers around tonight. Tomorrow, we'll have showers and thunderstorms through the middle and late afternoon. And once they get started, we're going to have more of that wet weather with very heavy rain for Saturday night and the very first part of Sunday. By Sunday afternoon, partly sunny skies. I'm Georgia meteorologist Laura Huckabee in the GNN Weather Center. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard and Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak with someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia working to add life to your days. 105.5 FM and Jess at Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. We continue on with the world-famous Butch and Bob show on WIFO. And so which team did we have beat Benedictine yesterday? Was it soccer? Boys soccer team, yeah. Boys soccer it was, it team, was a, it was BC. There's a 2-1 win for BC here, and it, this was the rematch, and Wayne County went over there. I understand it was a very intense match, but uh, Coach let us know that they won last night 2-1, to one, so congratulations to them. That Emmanuel Herrera, man, he's just a goal-scoring machine for the boys. For every time they get a score, he scored the goal. So right. he scored the a goal. And, again, our congrats to the boys' soccer team for knocking off. It's always nice to hear Wayne County team beat BC. That's right. Always good to hear. Yeah, that's that. right. Anytime you beat uh, BC, it's, BC, it's beat a good BC day. It's a good day. Used, that's right. Used to be like in the, in the, in the time, uh, in the day, anytime that you beat Valdosta, that was a great year. <laughs> 
I in remember, football. I remember legendary John Donalds. He could not stand BC. He used to always say, "If we could beat BC, if we could beat BC, if we could beat BC." We've had that rivalry for years with the BC cadets. Yep, it has been, and we yeah. continue on with as they'll stay in our in our region uh, next yeah, for year. The next two years, yep. Next two years, along with the other, all those other state champions, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think there's six state champions on that football schedule. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear. That's it. just amazing, can't, right there, Bob. Can't wait to talk to the new football coach about that schedule. So. But apparently we got our new football coach, Jay Mooring, coming from Savannah. What's Country his name Day. again? What now? Jay Mooring. M O H Mooring. M O H R I N G. Jay Mooring, the football coach formerly Savannah Country Day. Savannah Country Day. Yeah. All right. We look forward to meeting him, have him on the show, sure. have him on yeah. after the games, interviews during the week, the coaches show and things of that sort. Same thing every coach has done here since the seven early seventies, Bob. I remember when my, my dad used to do what you did back in the 70s, which was go and do the coaches show with Coach Donaldson. Mm-hmm. He said all he had to do was go in there and start the conversation with John Donaldson, mm-hmm. give him the recorder, and, and he could just go, sit back for right. 30 minutes and John would just go on. <laughs> yeah. Some coaches have the gift of gab. Some don't over the years. Uh, yeah, it's, it is. it's been difficult with some, but yeah. more than others. <laughs> Some, some, like you said, you just ask one question and they can go there on for go. three, four <laughs> Others. All right, say, it's been 30 minutes, Coach. It's about to other, 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 others, up. others, you get that one or two word answer. You're like, okay, let me get another question. <laughs> it's a struggle to get that almost 30 minutes. You're like, Coach, it's a 30 minute show. You got to talk. <laughs> talk a little bit. <laughs> well, speaking of soccer, um, Wayne Christian Academy has uh, a home game today, their first home game. It's against Heart to Heart Christian. It'll be held at the All Purpose um, Field at Bill Morris Park, where they play soccer and other things there. You know, right there next to the um, uh, to um, um, the Sunset Boulevard there. And the girls' game starts at four, and right after that will be the boys' game. So Wayne Christian Academy soccer today there at the All Purpose Field at Bill Morris Park today. Their first home game. And so we wish the uh, Eagles the best as they just started their soccer season. Uh, they played um, early this week against uh, the JV of Wayne County High School, which made them the visitors when they played there at the soccer field at um, uh, right next to the stadium there. So wish them the best. Their first year soccer. They're trying to get it put together. All right. 105.5 FN. Jesse, what's going on this weekend, Bob? Anything? Uh, I said it doesn't look good for Saturday golf. I know oh, that. it doesn't. But, Especially uh, the afternoon. If you could, y'all usually don't tee off to about noon, right? 12.30. 12.30, yeah. yeah. The later in the day it gets, the worse know. it's going to be. City's got their retreat. That starts Sunday afternoon, so they're going to do that at the airport. So Sunday afternoon. We'll so they decided not to go to Savannah yeah, and spend to the to money Savannah. on right, meals so. and hotel and uh, keep it here. They're going to do it Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. The Tuesday session is going to be at City Hall, but that's the day they're going to go through the application for a city manager. So, Oh, they are? Yeah. That's, they got a long executive session planned for that to go through the applications. So they're going to have an executive session on Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. Look, I mean, they're going to make a decision or they're just going to go through the yeah, applicants? I think they're going to go through the applicants. Like I said, if they narrow it down to three, they've got to release those three names. Oh, they got to release them. the names. Yeah, they if get if they three. do it. Yeah, sometimes they just name the person. So. Yeah. We'll it find all, out. It all depends how the process goes. Bob will let you know just as soon as it happens. That's on the agenda for the weekend. Okay. All right. And so looks like we got that new football coach for Wayne County High School. How's the basketball search going? Still going. For ba- men's uh, basketball. Uh, talking to Coach McDonald yesterday, that, that search is still uh, – I think they've done all the interviews. It's just a matter of you know, narrowing it down and selecting the new – Men's basketball coach. That decision has not been made as of yet. Okay. So we swept two of our rivals lately in baseball, right? Pearson. Yeah, Pearson. Wayne, Wayne County. Uh, Pearson County? Ware, right. Yeah, yeah. Pearson Ware County. We yeah. swept both of those in the last couple yeah. of weeks. Pitching's been very, very good for Wayne County. I mean, you got good pitching. You can win a lot of ball games. So. Oh, yeah. But it's been very, very good. Like I said last night on the post game show, we started hitting the ball. We're going to be a dangerous baseball team. And yeah. listening to the last couple of games, we haven't been um, uh, walking that many people, right. hitting batters, and making errors. Right. Those, I don't know how good you are. If you do those things, it's going to kill you. So it seems like we've, we've worked on that. 
and uh, doing better in that department. So we begin region next week, right, yep, in baseball? Yep, Tuesday afternoon, 530. Come on out and pack the park and support the Yellow Jackets as we take on Burke at 530. Again, that game time is 530 due to them traveling that far. And then we go their place a week from today for the doubleheader, 430 and 7 are the game times for next Friday okay. at Burke. So this region schedule kicks in. All right, moving into region. All the warm-up games are over. Now this is where the – This is where you jockey for position in the state playoffs that's right. and get in the bracket. So hopefully we can get that number one seed and play those state playoff games at home. That's the hope. Okay. But, but BC and Southeast Bullock and the Islands and New Hampstead will have something to say about it. So we'll see how it all plays out. But I feel pretty good about it. I said BC will be tough, but – we got two of the three games against BC at home, so I like how the schedule has come out. So last year we had to go over there twice, but this year they got to come to our place twice. So that'll be fun times when BC rolls into town. I'm sure the place will be packed. Okay, I'm sure it will be. Yeah, should be fun. Yeah, somebody sent us a texture on something. I don't know what it's about. It's a picture or something, so I can't try to interpret it. I don't see any explanation here. Okay. So I'll just take a look at it a little bit and see if I can read it a little bit. Well, Bob, we are out of time. Hope you have a great weekend. Look it up, you too. All right. World famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. And, and the world famous Butch and Bob show has been brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates.